Good morning, students. Today I am going to discuss prose entitled "The Grammar of Anarchy" by um, B. R. Ambedkar. Okay, guys. Before going into the story, the grammar of anarchy. First, give me the uh, first. Let me say the meanings of this grammar and anarchy. So, what is the meaning of grammar? Grammar. What is that? A set of rules and principles. What is anarchy? So look at here, absence of government. So what is this? Here, it is a state of a society being freely constituted without authorities. Okay, that is the meaning of anarchy. So actually, this the grammar anarchy just. it is an extract 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 from the speech which was given by honorable honorable dr b r ambedkar in the constitution assembly of india on 25th november 19 on 25th november so in the year 1949 so this yes what is the story the grammar of anarchy actually this prose it, it is an extract taken from his speech now coming to the actually pre reading activities look at here what is anarchy what is its opposite so just now i discussed what is anarchy so all of you understood what is anarchy what is that is is the state of a is the state of a society here what uh, what is that state of a society being freely constituted without authorities what is that no government absence of government okay and now we came to know you came to know the what is the opposite of this anarchy now coming to the next point next question We celebrate August fifteen as Independence Day and Jan twenty six as Republic Day. What is the significance of these two dates, and what is the difference between this? Yes, everyone, we know this. What is the difference between August fifteenth and Jan twenty sixth? Next question: India became an independent country on August fifteenth, nineteen forty seven. What was the status of of India before independence? Yes, what was the status? Yes, even we are familiar with this answer. Yes, everybody know this answer. Now coming to the so we know our position before independence. What is this actually? Because of Britishers, because of the uh, Britishers domination. Yes, we suffered a lot. Our Indians suffered a lot. because of the british domination okay what is a country and what is a nation do both words mean the same or is there any difference between them so look at here so what is a country so country or a state what is that actually here country the country or the state are are self what are they they are self governing political entity entities yes got it then what is nation nation is a group of a people who share the same territory history and culture okay once again i am going to repeat actually what is country here whether whether we take country or state what is that here self governing governing political entities entities but whereas nation it's a group of people who share the same territory history and culture okay that is called as nation okay country what is that self governing political entities entities they are called as okay now it's clear 
And next, what does phrase unity in diversity mean? How is it relevant to India? How is unity different from uni uniformity? Look at here. Yes, India is, yes, what is that? Unity in diversity. Yes, Indians have unity in diversity. What is that? Actually, what is unity in diversity? Together, togetherness or integrity. Actually, Indians. So, we have so many religions, so many castes. So, apart, apart from these feelings, yes? So, so many variations. Yes, so many peoples and with so many religions and castes. So, what is that? So many variations. Physical qualities. What are their skin color? And next, caste, religion, differentiation, caste differentiations, cultural and religion. What is the uh, cultural, traditional differences? So many of differences are, yes, so many different types of people are living in our India. They are staying in our India. So, they, uh, everyone are called as Indians. Yes. So, apart from this variation, we have together togetherness feeling. What is that integrity? So togetherness, unity. We are unity. We are in one word. Unity in diversity, though with different variations of religion, caste, um, uh, creed, skin color, whatever religion. So, but we are together. Togetherness. Understood? Unity. So we are united in diversity. Okay, it's very familiar word to us. Already we had come across through these words in our social studies. So, unity in diversity. Next. Actually, what is unity? Just know. Yes. What did I say? It's a togetherness. Working together. What is uniformity? It's, look at here, quality or state of being uniform. Now, coming to the slogans of our Indian constitutions, what are the slogans? Liberty, equality, fraternity. Today, it is also the motto of two countries. Do you know which are these countries? Okay. Look at here. These are the questions. Okay. We are very familiar with these words, liberty, equality, fraternity. So, what is liberty? We know it's a freedom. Yes. Next, what is equality? What is equality? Yes, equality. So the name itself saying that equal, equality between men and women. Yes, no differentiation between men and women. Next, what is fraternity? It's a common fraternity. What is sense? What is that? What is mean by that? A common brotherhood of all Indians. So, India, all Indians are my brothers and sisters. So, what is that? Fraternity. So, everybody should have brotherhood feelings. So, that is called as fraternity. Fraternity. Okay? Liberty, equality and fraternity. Okay? These are the slogans of our country. Liberty, equality and fraternity or fraternity. Okay. Now, let me go to author's introduction. So, we know about this Ambedkar. Yes. Bhimrao Ramaji Ambedkar. Ramji. Bhimrao Ramji Ambedkar. Actually, he was born in Madhya Pradesh on April 14th. We know this, April 14th. The chief architect of the Indian constitution and one of the makers of modern Indian nation. So actually this guy, he belongs to untouchable uh, community, hailing from a community considered untouchable by the Hindus. Yes, Ambedkar grew up with all this, whatever experienced with all this discrimination, caste discriminations. Encouraged by the, by the Maharaj of Baroda, he went to Columbia University, New York, where he did his master thesis on the caste system and doctoral work on British finance in India. 
yes so he had what is uh, his thesis what was his thesis on the caste system because he grew up with this with this uh, casteism caste discrimination so he had his thesis on the caste system he was a social reformer who fought for the rights of people from the deprived sections of society yes we know this next so he is a person who who got who received bharat ratna india's highest civilian honor honor okay now coming to the actually completed pre reading activity about the author now actually what is the speech about the speech so we are saying it's it's an extract from his speech actually what is that about the speech the grammar of anarchy is an edi edited extract from dr ambedkar's closing speech in the constitute a constituent assembly on november 25 1949 the speech outlines the diversity of india and details the challenges the country would face in implementing the constitution emphasizing the need to build a nation on the basis of social equality doctor so what is the basis what is his basis ma on the basis of social equality understood ma so social equality not political democracy social democracy look at here dr ambedkar unfolds a road map that india needs to follow in order to hold its fragments together and graduate from being a country to a full fledged nation so look at here being a country so it's not a country to be full fledged nation just know we had come across through the words country and nation so what is a nation it's a group of people who share the same territory history culture etc got it country is different from nation so dr ambedkar's three advisers to give up the grammar of anarchy what is that grammar of anarchy to avoid hero worship so worshiping hero worship so worshiping to avoid hero worship and to work towards a social and not just a political democracy continue to be relevant even today so he is he so about about the speech in in this in his speech he delivered that india indian should have uh, indian should have social democracy not political democracy so actually what is democracy a form of government a form of a form of government which people have the authority to choose their governing body yes got it democracy meaning of democracy a form of government which people have the authority to choose their governing body yes people so it's people's country so now coming to the grammar of anarchy in detail so look at here all of you a uh, extract speech by the honorable ambedkar dr b r ambedkar in the constitution assembly of india so fr friday the 25th november 1949 on 26th january 1950 india will be an independent country what would happen to her independence will she maintain her independence or will she lose it again this is the first thought that comes to my mind it is not that india was never an independent country the point is that she once lost the independence she had what is that here she who is she india so india just india once lost the independence because britishers dominated india yes once lost the independence now it's a second time so he had he had a doubts it's a second time it is this thought which makes me most anxious for the future what uh, what but uh, what uh, perturbs me greatly is the fact that not only india has once before lost her independence but she lost it by the but she lost it by the infidelity and trickery of some of her own people yes so because of some indian peoples of that because of them yes while history repeat itself it is this 
thought which fills me with anxiety. This anxiety is deepened by the realization of the fact that in addition to our old enemies in the form of caste and creeds, yes, we are going to have many political parties with diverse and opposing political creeds. While Indians place the country above their creed or will they place creed above country? I don't know, but this much is certain that if the parties place creed above country, our independence will be put in jeopardy. What is that? Problem. A second time and probably be lost forever. This eventuality we must all resolutely, resolutely guard against. We must be determined to defend our independence with the last drop of our blood. So what is here? So he is saying, Ambedkar, just he is delivering that already once our Indi Indians lost our independence. So now if second time, because of the political parties creed, because of this, uh, some political parties uh, because of them, if something happens, so what again the, our India is going to be in pool of that is problems. Yes. So because of the political parties, what is that their selfishness because of their involvements. So what happened because of their self, self greed, what is going to happen? The India again, our India is going to be in a problems. So just probably be lost forever. Yes, he was saying, yes, he delivered in his speech. Now coming to the next talk, what is that? On the 26th January, look at here, on the 26th January 1950, India would be democratic country in the sense that India from that day would have a government of the people, by the people and for the people. Yes, uh, everybody know that. Of the people, government of the people. It's people's government. By the people and for the people. Yes. The same thought comes to my mind. What would happen to her democratic constitution? Will she be able to maintain it or will she lo lose it again? This is the second thought that comes to my mind and makes me and makes me as anxious at the first. So, first time uh, already it lost its independence. Now, second time. So, what happens because of the greediness of the politi uh, political parties? Something happens in negative. What is what? What? Look at here. Is the second thought that comes to my mind and makes me as anxious as the first. Okay. What is syndicate? Will she be able to maintain it or will she lose it again? So that's the question in his mind. It is not that India did not know what democracy. There was a time when India was studded with republics and even where there were uh, monarchies, they were either elected or limited. They were never absolute. It is not that India did not know parliaments or parliamentary procedures. A study of the Buddhist Pikshu Sanghas discloses that not only were there parliaments, but the Sanghas were...